So I got a plate full of shaving cream. We're gonna put some sprinkles on it. Get some white paper and smoosh it on there. And sh sure, there's no way this is real. Today, I'm gonna show you how to marble paper. How to marble paper more like, wow. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. So I'm gonna show you five different ways to marble paper and then just experiment a little bit. So cool. So for the first one, we're gonna use almond milk, some soap and some food coloring. Just pour that almond milk into like a two inch tall pan. You can like put your soap into a cup or just pour it directly onto your knife, which you'll see later. But you're gonna add some food coloring. Boop, 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 boop. And then with a knife or a Q-tip, you're gonna dip that into soap and the soap is what reacts with the almond milk and the food coloring to make these little explosions. Fireworks? I don't know, they're cute. You can then just like stir it around and try to get that marble effect by cutting through with your knife or your Q-tip, whatever you're using to spiral it up. Then just take some paper, smoosh it on in and yeah. So we're gonna try that a couple different times and see if we can get different effects, different looks. They all kind of look the same. So for every method, we're gonna use the same pan, but this time we're gonna use some shaving cream. Let's go raid your dad's closet. I don't know, who, who still uses shaving cream like this? Do I use shaving cream like this? I don't, do I, I, I should shave more. So for those, this one's pretty straightforward. You just put some food coloring in on that shaving cream and then mix up with the knife, put your paper down on, lift it up, and then you just gotta scrape off all the excess shaving cream. And it should leave a nice little marbled image on your paper. Cool, cool, cool. And like the last one, you can reuse this a couple different times to get kind of the same color, same effect. But eventually you'll have to add more shaving cream and more food coloring. So for the next one, we got some nail polish. So just put that in some water and try to just drip it in there. It's kind of tough. And we're kind of struggling with it, honestly. I made like an interesting film. It's like to my finger. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, it looked kind of cool. It's kind of cool with like the film. I kind of like it. So here's my thoughts. My thoughts are that if we dilute the nail polish with like acetone or nail polish remover, then it will be easier to like disperse. Is that a good word? Sure. To like put out across the water. So I had those little squeeze bottles from the tie dye video I just did and just reused them. And yeah. It, it worked, it worked well enough, but also like, I feel like you have to go really fast because it does start to harden on top of the water. So I went as fast as I could, did a little bit of mix up with that knife, but the fact that it kind of does harden while you're working with it does make for these cool like breaking effects. That I thought was pretty interesting. So let's put the paper in and if you can angle the paper, ooh, paper? R's, W's and L's are hard for me. But yeah, if you can angle the paper in, then it will kind of avoid getting any air bubbles. So I just cleaned it up and then tried it again. Got another similar effect. But honestly, if you want that effect, you can actually get it pretty easily with spray paint, which was a lot easier to do and a lot quicker. You'd basically just use the spray paint, like the aerosol stuff or the force behind it to do the mixing for you. So if you sprayed it in, it would just marble it itself. And it would spiral and look real neat. Wow, that looks real neat. What, is this paper marveling? Uh, uh, uh. You, you already made that joke. You can't make it again. So something happened with spray paint that every time we dipped it in, the after, like, spirals always looked cooler to me. And also it was like more faint and lighter. So yeah, I like the second dip way better. I wanted to try it again with alternating red and clear paint. And then I bowed the paper in the middle to put it in to avoid air bubbles. And it worked pretty well. And once again, that second dip, I liked it better. You can like clean off the stuff around it, pull it up. Kind of like you're just hydro dipping because that is what you're doing, you're hydro dipping paper here. So cool. So the last method is the traditional Japanese marbling called shuminagashi. Shuminagashi. And it's kind of similar to all the rest where you just put the ink on the surface of the water, mix it on up, put in your paper. Try not to get any air bubbles, otherwise you're gonna come up with some big white spaces. But honestly, you can just dip that again and it'll add for like kind of a cool effect right in the space of the air bubble. 
remove any of the excess ink from the top of the paper and yeah it looks pretty good so a couple things that we didn't do that first time is you use this little float paper that won't sink and when you put ink on top of it it will help spread the ink on top of the surface of the surface surface of the water instead of sinking down to the bottom so you just keep on adding it and it already looks pretty rad pretty spirally and another kind of odd thing that kept on happening with this is when the water spilled over on top of the back I always liked how the back looked better than the front does that make sense I always like how the back looked more than I like the front <laughs> there we go see looks rad so one other trick that we learned while doing this is don't use food coloring actually it didn't even matter you just mixed it up and it didn't make any difference but the trick was to get off the excess ink after you've dipped your paper in it you can actually run it under like a sink under some running water and then plot it die plot it die then plot blot it blot it dry with some paper towels that just kept the texture of the paper towel from transferring to your paper so we have milk shaving cream fingernail polish spray paint shuminigashi so starting with the first, using soy milk, it made for like an interesting pattern, but it didn't really look like marbling in my eyes. I really liked shaving cream, how easy and how like vibrant the colors were and how it kind of felt like it was part of the paper. Nail polish was really cool, really thick, an interesting effect, hard to work with. And spray paint was cool, but it wasn't like flexible. So the moment the paper starts bending, it kind of gets all flaky and then it'll just flake right off. Suminagashi was by far my favorite process. It was very pastel, which I liked a lot, but probably the least accessible. So now I just want to experiment, try a bunch of different things. But before I get to that, pass me a something to say. All right, so first off, a huge thank you to Ainsley who's been helping with this video. I've been editing this entire time trying to get the video that I just put out. And she's been helping me do projects so that I can put out more stuff for you guys. So if you guys have been watching me for a while or not, one thing you probably noticed is that one of my like frequent sponsors is Squarespace. They're a really easy service to plug because I've been using them for five years now and over these five years they've just gotten better and better. What Squarespace is, is it's a website to build websites. Whether it's like domain, landing page, your templates, your e-commerce, your marketing, your email campaigns, whatever, they've got it. So a couple of reasons why I use Squarespace is one, how simple it is to make something that looks professional. I got a website and an e-commerce little shop posted overnight and I've used the same one this entire time, these whole five years. I might update. And I should update because they have a bunch of new templates that look great. Um, another reason is because of their email campaigns. Being able to do and make something so personal that actually goes into like the inbox of an individual is such a powerful tool. And if you want, you can actually join my email newsletter. It's on my site under newsletter. So that's such a powerful tool to, to be able to connect with individuals and kind of create that relationship. The last, one of the big reasons why I use it is it's so easy to connect Squarespace with my other service for shipping. So it just, it's easy to integrate things, which means it's less work for me. And that's the goal. It's, it's make things as simple and easy for me to create more for you guys. So that's Squarespace. So I feel like everyone is creative. Everyone's an artist. You just kind of have to let it out. And Squarespace is an awesome way to do that. I'm sure you guys have thought of something that maybe you could make a website, whether it's like a product or it's a blog, it's a place to have videos live, whatever. You guys can go over to Squarespace right now and create it for free. Then when you decide to purchase something, remember to use the coupon code SHMOOD to get an extra 10% off your first purchase. So cool. So the idea behind sprinkles is that the food coloring in the sprinkles would dissolve into the shaving cream and work kind of like actual food coloring but nope so cool so next i got the liquid mask stuff that you use like when you're water coloring so just painted a little cute little smiley face hi i'm a smiley face and i'm just happy to be here let that dry load up another pan of water and some more marbling i really like this it was like a little paper boat whoa i'm so fast for reals this suminigashi i feel like i'm slaughtering that pronunciation but for real, the process of that was so much fun. So then just put the paper in there and it looks like it's gonna work. So let's put some paper dowels down just to see if it'll work and looking good. 
went and rinsed that off with water and then peeled it off. Peeled off the masking, the liquid mask, which is now not liquid because it was dry. And yeah, looks like that works and that would work pretty well. So for the next one, there's actually like a bunch of different things that you could use to like mix up the ink after it's on there. One of them was a pick, which honestly looks so cool. That looks so cool. I'm paper marveling again. Oh, I'm ink marveling. Wow, what a marvel. I, uh, okay, enough. So while the paper's still wet, added some salt to the top to see what would happen. Oh, and yeah, I thought that looked pretty cool. So for next one, we got a toaster and some toast. Hot. Well, careful, it's hot. I hope you guys are enjoying watching the, the sh sumigashi. I can't say it. Suminigashi. Suminigashi. Suminigashi as much as I am. Because I could watch that over and over and over and over and that didn't work. But it did make the studio smell like toast. So that was, that was nice. That smelled real good. It sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but I'm not. I do like the smell of, of toast. Whoa. Whoa. So I was very, very determined to make the sprinkle work. Also, I feel like this whole part right here should be ASMR. Maybe I'll do like an ASMR thing. So I thought that if I put the sprinkles down and then spray it with acetone, maybe that would dissolve the color, but that didn't work. So I put more down, spray it with water, let that sit, still nothing. So I thought I'd try different sprinkles and more water and just nothing. It just didn't work, but I didn't want to waste this uh, shaving cream. So I just added some more food coloring in there and mixed it on up. And then added some more shaving cream, mixed it on up. And, oh, added more shaving cream? Sure, why not? That could be fun. Mix it on up. Hey, you, you get off my finger. Then just smushed some paper down in on there. Use some cardboard to scrape it off. And, cool, that's gonna work. I wanna try some more, so I added more shaving cream, put in more food coloring, mixed it on up. This time I want to add a bunch of salt, so I put a bunch of salt on there to see what happened. Again, smush some paper in there. Oh, wow. Smush in that water. Okay. Then I just covered it. <laughs> I don't know why, but I covered it. And I wanted to try again with like a clean slate, so I just put some white shaving cream. All shaving cream is white. Is all shaving cream white? That seems pretty suspicious. But I made a cute little rainbow pattern and then used the pick to add some texture to it, which I thought looked pretty neat. And yeah. One thing that I messed up is when I put on this paper, I kind of did a sloppy job and then I did a sloppy job scraping that off and I'll show you in a little bit. But that made me think I should try to do like a tie dye looking one. And I kind of messed up this one too. I probably should have put the blue next to the yellow and not the red, but meh, whatever. Use that pick to kind of distort it. It looked okay, not great. Put some more white to hopefully make that look more like a tie-dye. Distort it again. I, I, I want to try this again. That's all I got to say. So, there's the one with the mask. And so I just peeled that on off. I found that if you pull it, like, instead of straight up against the paper, but more, like, uh, to the side, it helps from tearing the paper. And that looked really cool. And here's the one with the salt. <laughs> I thought it looked really, like look grainy which yeah it's salt and that like I did a really bad job at scraping it off so it got really messy and again with this one I kind of I did a little bit better scraping it off but still a little messy so the best thing to do when pulling the paper out and scraping it is doing it in a clean smooth confident motion and use something that's very straight like a piece of glass from a picture frame sure Alright, so be sure to like and subscribe, go ahead and hit that bell notification, and yeah, thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for our patrons.